Good day, fellow investors. I have found an amazing video by Peter Lynch that explains everything you need to know about investing. So enjoy it. Are you concerned about the volatility in the uh, financial markets today? Do you think something needs to be done okay. to reduce it? I, I, I love volatility. I, I think I remember when uh, in 1972, uh, the market went from uh, uh, down dramatically and Taco Bell went from 14 to 1. They had no debt. They never had a, a restaurant close. And uh, I started buying at 7, but I, I kept on to it and it went to 1. And uh, it was the largest position in Magellan in 1978 when it was bought out for, by $42 by Pepsi-Cola. And I think it would have gone to 400 if they didn't buy it out. I think volatility is terrific. I think it is very, I think these callers are very important. I don't think the market going up 80 points one day and down 80 the next uh, is a good thing for the public. I think that's not a very good thing. But I think all these callers and all these other things, to keep the volatility down each day is important. But the market's going to go up and down. Over the, and human nature hasn't changed a lot in 25,000 years. And some event will come out of left field and uh, the market will go down or the market will go up. So I, volatility will occur and markets will continue to have these ups and downs. I think that's a great opportunity if people can understand what they own. If they don't understand what they own, they can own mutual funds try and figure out mutual funds they own and keep adding to it. Over, basic corporate profits have grown about 8% a year historically. So corporate profits double about every nine years. The stock market ought to double about every nine years. So I think the next market's about 3,800 today, 3,700. I'm pretty convinced the next 3,800 points will be up. It won't be down. The next 500 points, the next 600 points, I don't know which way they're going. So the market ought to double in the next eight or nine years. It ought to double again in the eight or nine years after that. Because profits will go up 8% a year, and, and, and stocks will fall. That's all there is to it. But you should study history, and history is the important thing you learn from. What you learn from history is the market goes down. It goes down a lot. The math is simple. There's been 93 years a century. This is easy to do. The market's had 50 declines of 10% or more. So 50 declines in 93 years. About once every two years, the market falls 10%. We call that a correction. That means, that's a euphemism for losing a lot of money rapidly. But we, you know, we call it a correction. And uh, uh, so 50 declines in 93 years, about once every two years, the market falls 10%. Of those 50 declines, 15 have been 25% or more. That's known as a bear market. We've had 15 declines in 93 years. So every six years, the market's going to have a 25% decline. That's all you need to know. You need to know the market's going to go down sometime. If you're not ready for that, you shouldn't own stocks. And it's good when it happens. If you like a stock at 14 and it goes to 6, that's great. You understand the company, you look at the balance sheet, and they're doing fine. And you're hoping to get to 22 with it. 14 to 22 is terrific. 6 to 22 is exceptional. So you take advantage of these declines. They're going to happen. No one knows when they're going to happen. It would be very, people tell you about it after the fact that they predicted it, but they predicted it 53 times. And uh, so you can take advantage of the volatility in the market if you understand what you own. Because a lot of times people buy on the basis, the stock has gone down this much, how, you know, how much further can it go down? I remember when Polaroid went from 130 to 100, people said, here's this great company, great record. If it ever gets below 100, you know, just buy every share, you know. And it did get below 100. A lot of people bought on that basis saying, look, it's gone from 135 to 100. It's now 95, what a buy. Within a year, it was 18. And this is a company with no debt. I mean, this is a company that was just so overpriced, it went down. Uh, I did the same thing in my, uh, I think my first or second year of Fidelity. Kaiser Industries had gone from $26 a share to 16. I said, how much lower can it go? It's 16. So I think we bought one of the biggest blocks ever on the, New York, on the American Stock Exchange of Kaiser Industries at 14. I said, you know, it's gone from 26 to 16. How much lower can it go? Well, at 10, I called my mother and said, Mom, you got to, uh, Look at this Kaiser Industries. I mean, how much lower can it go? It's gone from 26 to 10. <laughs> well, it went to 6, it went to 5, it went to 4, it went to 3. And uh, now I under fortunately, this happened rapidly, or I would probably be still caddying or uh, being, you know, working at the stop and shop, but I, it happened fast. So I was able to, this, this was compressed. At, uh, and at 3, I figured out, you know, there's something very wrong here because Kaiser Industries owns 40% of Kaiser Steel, they own 40% of Kaiser Aluminum, they own 32% of Kaiser Cement. They own Kaiser Broadcasting, they own Kaiser Santa Gravel, Kaiser Engineers, they own Jeep, they own business after business, and they had no debt. 
Now, I learned this very early. This might be a breakthrough for some people. It's very hard to go bankrupt if you don't have any debt. It's, it's tricky. Some people can approach that. It's a, real, it's a real achievement. But they had no debt, and the whole company at three was selling at about $75 million. At that point, it was equal to buying one Boeing 747. I said, there's something wrong with this company selling for $75 million. I was a little premature at 16, but uh, I said, everything's fine, and eventually this will work out. And they, what they did is they gave away all their shares to their shareholders. They, they passed out shares in Kaiser Cement. They passed out shares in Kaiser Aluminum. They passed out their public shares in Kaiser Steel. They sold all the other businesses, and you get about $50 a share. And, but if you didn't understand the company, if you're just buying on the fact the stock had gone from 26 to 16, and then it got to 10, what would you do when it went to 9? What would you do when it went to 8? What would you do when it went to 7? This is the problem that people have, is they sell stocks because they didn't know why they bought it, then it went down, and they don't know what to do now. Do you flip a coin? Do you walk around the block? You know, <laughs> what do you do? It's psychiatry that haven't worked so far. I've never seen them running in. The, the, the psychological psychiatry fund I've never seen listed for the, uh, with the SEC to make it through as a mutual fund. So I, they haven't seemed to help. Uh, I've tried prayer. That hasn't worked. The, uh, the, uh, so if you don't understand the company, you have this problem when they go down. Uh, eventually, they always come back. Uh, this one is... Uh, this one doesn't work either. Uh, people think uh, RCA just about got back to its 1929 high when General Electric took it over. Uh, a lot of double knits never came back. Remember those beauties? Uh, uh, floppy disks, Western Union. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, people saying it'll come back. Well, it doesn't have to come back. Uh, here's another one you hear all the time. It's $3. How much can I lose? I've had people call me up saying, I'm thinking of buying this stock at 3 How much can I lose? Well, again, you, you may need a piece of paper for this, but if you put, uh, if you, you put $20,000 in a stock at 50, or your neighbor put $20,000 at, at 50 into the stock, and you put $20,000 in at three, and it goes to zero, you lose exactly the same amount of money, everything. And people say, it's three, how much can I lose? Well, if you put a million dollars on it, you can lose a million dollars. Just the fact that stock, this is the only, this may be a reason to research a stock. The fact that stock is three down from 100, doesn't mean you should uh, buy it. And in fact, short sellers, people that really make money in stocks, they don't short Walmart, they don't short Home Depot, they don't short the great companies, Johnson Johnson. They short stocks down from 80 to 7. They'd like to short it at 16 or 22, but they, f they figured out at 7 that this company is going to go to zero. They just haven't blown taps on this thing yet. It's going to zero. And they're, they're selling it short at 7, they're selling it short at 6, at 5, at 4, at 3, at 2, at 1 and a quarter. And you know to sell something short, you need a buyer. Somebody has to buy the damn thing. And you wonder, who's buying this thing? It's these people saying, it's three. How much lower can it go? You know, the, uh, the, uh... Thank you, Peter. If you enjoyed his mindset and how we structured it when it comes to investing, please check my free stock market course, investing course, where we are summarizing Peter Lynch's book. Also, subscribe to this channel. And that's it. Click like if you enjoyed this. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.